Let's talk about all of the exciting fantasy coming out in the latter half of the year. Welcome to my anticipated fantasy releases video. I do this video biannually, meaning twice a year. And now we're going to talk about all of the exciting fantasies coming out July through December. There are so many exciting titles. I'm just going to pick the few that I'm most excited for each month and talk about them, talk about why I'm excited to read them, and give you guys some recommendations for some new books coming out in the months to come. The first book I want to talk about is A Soul of Ash and Blood, and this is Castile's point of view of From Blood and Ash. This is the Barnes & Noble Bowl collectible edition. I will also be getting the regular edition and I'll put the cover up here so you can see what it looks like. But essentially this book is Castile's point of view for From Blood and Ash. I'm a sucker for a good remix. You know, I love, want to know what the guy was thinking during the events of, of most romances. So I'm kind of excited for a little peek into his head and to see what he was thinking during these events and it'll be fun to revisit the events also because I still think that this is the best book in the series and it'll kind of be fun to just see it from a different point of view, remix it a little bit. A Soul of Blood and Ash came out on July 18th. Next to talk about is Lightbringer by Pierce Brown. This is the Red Rising series. This is a series about a guy who's like a red blood and he somehow infiltrates the, the gold-blooded people and he realizes that while his people thought that they were content, they were actually slaves and it's this whole sci-fi saga and this is the latest one in a long series. I do want to eventually read the series. I think I have the first one somewhere. Maddie gave it to me like a long time ago. Her dad said it was good. So I'll get to it eventually. I do want to pick up more sci-fi, but yeah. Lightbringer is the sixth book in the Red Rising saga, and it is out on July 25th. Next is House of Roots and Ruin, which is the sequel to House of Salt and Sorrows. So I read this book, I got it from Book of the Month, and when I read it, I was obsessed with it. I'm probably going to buy the like regular edition of this one just to match House of Roots and Ruin. Also, House of Roots and Ruin has a Barnes & Noble exclusive edition with a sprayed edge that I already did purchase, so that's exciting. And yeah, I'm so excited we're returning to this world. This book is I really what I think opened my eyes to gothic horror fantasy, which is like my favorite subgenre of fantasy ever. And this is the book that started it all. I really didn't know what to expect when I read it. I just thought it was going to be okay. And I ended up being obsessed with it. And it was on my top 10 books of 2021, I think is the year that I read it. And I was obsessed. And House of Roots and Ruin follows one of the sisters. If you don't know, House of Salt and Sorrows was loosely based on the story of the 12 dancing sisters. It says the House of Roots and Ruin is a story of doom love, menacing ambition, and the ghosts that haunt us forever. So in this book we're following the sisters Verity and Camille and they are the only ones that have remained at the estate by the sea. Verity wants to paint a portrait of a prominent lady's son but Camille won't allow it and Verity is furious until Camille lets her know that the reason that she can't is because she is actually seeing ghosts. So she runs away and she flees to the estate where this lady Bloem lives and she is inextricably drawn to their son Alexander but there is more darkness than meets the eye at this estate. I love it. I'm so excited. This one was very um sea focused imagery and horror and I think this one's gonna be more like flower horror which I don't know if this counts as a subgenre but I like love like earthy horror where like it involves like trees and flowers and things like that which there tends to be a lot of in horror these days like a lot of the horror covers like have flowers like growing out of someone's mouth but like I eat it up every time I love it House of Roots and Ruin is out on July 25th now we have Chloe Gong's adult debut and that is Immortal Longings and I'm so excited. I have read These Violent Delights by her and this was her YA series and I really did enjoy it. She has like three or four YA books now but this is her adult debut so she's just churning them out and it is still with the theme of a Shakespearean fantasy set retelling. So this one is a loose retelling of Antony and Cleopatra and it's set in a world with gods. I love the kind of different direction they went with for this cover versus her other covers and I'm just so excited to read it. And the series is called the Flesh and False Gods series. So what is really cool about this series is that their power 
is the ability to jump from body to body and like person to person and they have to compete in this trial using this ability and whoever is like the best at it wins and that is a pretty cool combination if you ask me. Immortal Longings came out on July 18th. This author did the series with the phoenixes that names escape me at the moment but we have bone smith by nikki paul prado this is coming out on july 25th and it's pitched as gideon the ninth meets the game of thrones white walkers so this story follows a disgraced ghost fighting warrior named ren who must journey into a haunted wasteland to rescue a kidnapped prince i love that like gender bent damsel in distress idea it's so much fun and as she goes to rescue this prince she's formed into an uneasy alliance with one of the kidnappers of the prince intriguing i'm loving the setup and i've heard great things about this author and i'm really intrigued to see what she can do with a new series and if you can't tell i'm trying to be a little bit more succinct with my descriptions than i usually am just because i have so many books to get through and i want to make sure i have enough time to get through them in a, like an appropriate amount of time and so this video is in three hours. Next is a debut novel and this is The Jassad Air by Sarah Hashim. So I actually just read an arc of this one last month I think and it was a really cool setup for a debut. We have a Sylvia and she is the heir to what is known as the Scorched Kingdom. It was a kingdom that was one of the last ones to still have magic and they were basically prosecuted for their use of magic and the kingdom is no more. Sylvia has been in hiding for 10 years and she has just tried as hard as she can to blend in so that she is never found. However, the Nizal heir, the Nizal are the people that kind of like keep the peace between all of the different kingdoms, finds her because she was using magic and was exposed and actually is going to use her as bait for bringing out the other Jassad people that are trying to rebel. And it's a lot about um, your identity and kind of like it's a reluctant chosen one trope and I thought it was very intriguing and you can watch my June wrap up for more of my in-depth thoughts. Next is The Third Daughter by Adrian Tooley and Adrian Tooley wrote Sweet and Bitter Magic which I read one or two years ago and obsessed, adored, loved it and this one seemed really intriguing as well so I had to pick it up third daughter came out on July 18th and there was this fan art that Adrian Tooley posted on her Instagram and I was like okay I gotta buy this book immediately. So we have Elodie who is the eldest daughter however there is a prophecy that the third daughter of the third daughter will take the throne and so Elodie's little sister is the one that takes the throne but she's not ready to rule and so Elodie kind of seeks out a way to get her sister on the throne so that she can be the one in power and she goes to this apothecary and the apothecary tries to give her a sleeping drop but instead she ends up giving her her own tears in a vial which are like way more powerful and now her little sister is in a coma and these two girls must team up to figure out a solution. I loved it. It seems a little power hungry but yet we'll have some interesting family dynamics. It's sapphic and it just seems like it's going to be a great adventure. Next we have The Rebel King by Gina L. Maxwell. It is the sequel to The Dark King and this is like a new adult fae book set in Las Vegas. Brynn goes to Vegas and has a one night stand and wakes up married except the guy she's married to is a billionaire and also king of the night court. So I feel like it combines like fae and billionaire romance into one and it's going to be so much fun. So I have this book. I'm excited to pick up the next one because I just feel like it's going to be a treat to read. The Rebel King comes out on July 25th. The last book I have to talk about is Starbringer by Tracy Wolf and Nina Croft. I actually saw Tracy Wolf at the Ali Hazelwood sighting and she was talking about this book and it's basically sapphics in space. And it's about seven deadly strangers with seven deadly secrets stuck together on a spaceship and they have to save the dying sun. Sounds pretty cool. Moving on to August, one of the books that I am arguably most excited for in the latter half of the year is Fox Glove by Adeline Grace, which is the sequel to Belladonna. I'm pretty sure I ranked this as like my number one favorite book last year. If not, it was it was close to the top. This was one of my favorites, one of my now favorite books. It was just so good. It was just so good. We have Cigna and she can see death and she's the only one that can see death and in order to commune with him better she like eat, she has to poison herself but anyways she's kind of her parents are dead she has been 
pass along from relative to relative her whole life and they keep dying on her and then she comes to Thorngrove Manor where she has her their like distant cousins her family and this this family is kind of deeply disturbed the mother has just recently passed away the sister is plagued with the same illness that the mother fell from and the father is just like throwing wild parties to get through the pain and the son is just kind of like not sure what to do so Signa comes to this family and the ghost of the mother since she can see death she can also see dead people and ghosts the ghost of the mother comes to her and is like something was not right about my death I need you to find who killed me and it was so good and I loved it and the sequel Fox Club is coming out and I cannot wait I want to read it like the second I get it I am going to Natalie Gray signing like I'm just so excited and happy because I love this book so so much and I love the cover for Fo like I love this cover but the cover for Fox Club is also beautiful and Fox Glove comes out on August 22nd wait it's kind of cool I never noticed but like with these books on the shelves next to each other let's zoom in. like they kind of form pattern because I guess it's like a wraparound but that's so cool so like the pattern continues on here anyways that was a side note yeah. also out in August is Zara by SJ Jones I mean just look at this cover it's called Guardians of the Dawn and it's described as Sailor Moon meets Cinder you have to say no more to get me to read this I do have an arc and I will be trying to read it as soon as possible so Jin Zara is in a world where magic is outlawed and forbidden and so she kind of has to deal with an evil stepmother and she has to keep her magic hidden until this man brings her to this organization known as the guardians of the dawn that are trying to fight for magical liberation there are people being transformed into monsters and so zara must use her powers to restore order to the chaos this just sounds so cool zara comes out on august 1st Next is He Who Drowned the World by Shelley Parker Chan. The first book in the series is She Who Became the Sun. This is a historical fantasy based on a gender-bent retelling of a famous emperor in China's history. But basically, there's this young woman and her and her brother get their fortunes told when they are young. And the girl's fortune is that she will basically become nothing and the the guy's fortune, her brother's fortune, is that he'll become this great ruler except one day her brother dies and she kind of assumes his identity in order to take over. He Who Drowned the World comes out on August 22nd. Okay, I'm actually so hyped for this one. It's Her Radiant Curse by Elizabeth Lim. This is a spin-off book to Six Crimson Cranes and The Dragon's Promise, beautiful books. I read this book in 2021 literally loved it also this is like one of my favorite covers it's so pretty and i also love this cover like the art style stunning her radiant curse follows shiori's stepmother as a young woman and she has a very intriguing background i also want to talk about these covers these are the uk covers like i both love the us and the uk covers like equally but they're so different and i feel like that so rarely happens but, like this one is gold foiling and it's so pretty and that this is what the U US and the UK covers for her reading curse will look like. So yeah, I don't really want to give too much away about the plot besides the fact that it follows Shori's stepmother from Six Crimson Cranes as a young woman and her journey and she's a very intriguing character so I think it's going to be very cool to see her read her story and I can't wait. Her Radiant Curse comes out on August 29th. Here I have an arc of Bring Me Your Midnight by Rachel Griffin and I'm so excited for this one. I read Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin two years ago and was obsessed with it. I do also need to read her sophomore novel but this is her first novel instead of being like urban fantasy. I want to say it's more like low fantasy where it's not in the real world. It's in like a fantasy world but it's not high fantasy. I don't know. I don't know the different classifications but anyways it's like truly like a fantasy book instead of an urban fantasy book. So Tana's fate has basically been determined since she was a child. She used to marry the governor's son for political reasons. She is from a coven of witches that every full moon they release their power into the ocean. But Tana misses one of the midnight rituals which is a fatal mistake until she meets Wolf. Wolf is from a clan that practices dark magic and instead of letting her magic run out to the sea he claims that by using dark magic she can unleash her full power and potential i mean witches dark magic ocean magic sign me up 
Bring Me Your Midnight comes out on August 1st. Next is the sequel to Only a Monster by Vanessa Lynn, and that is Never a Hero by Vanessa Lynn. So we follow 16 year old Joan who is sent to London to spend some time with extended family and she meets this really cute boy Nick but she finds out that her family is not just eccentric but is hiding the fact that they are all monsters and Nick is a monster slayer. That just sounds so fun. And Never a Hero which is the sequel is out on August 29th. This next book is by an author that I really want to get into and that is T. Kingfisher. I've been talking about how I like like gothic horror fantasy and I feel like T. T Kingfisher actually writes a lot in this genre so I need to read all of her stuff. But this is her newest one which captivated me by the description. And it says it's, it's a tale of a kind-hearted toad-shaped heroine, a gentle knight, and a mission gone completely sideways. That just sounds so fun! And it's like the prince comes to break the curse but Toadling, the her heroine, actually does not want the curse broken. So that's a cool dynamic. Her books are actually like more novellas as well. Like they're usually 100 to 200 pages. So I feel like it could be really fun to just like marathon all of her stuff. Thornhead is out on August 15th. We have A Multitude of Dreams by Mara Rutherford. This is the book that I feel like when we get into the fall time, like they just <laughs> pop out a lot of really cool books in the September, October time frame. Marla Rutherford has been getting the prettiest covers. I loved her cover for Poison Season which came out last year and I love this one too. And this book is actually a reimagining of Edgar Allan Poe's. So there is a plague that has finally passed and we have Princess Imogen who has to kind of pretend that everything is okay even though she's hiding this desperate secret and she is living in a boarded up castle. The Mask of Red Death where a mad king locks up all of his subjects in a castle. I might actually have to check out that book before I read this one, especially if it's a short story that'd be super easy to read, but I don't actually know, so I'd have to look it up. And this book is out on August 29th. Now September! This book seems so cute. It is Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Marer. And I don't know if you've seen her TikTok series, but she basically made a TikTok series about being an assistant to a villain, and then she made a book about it, and I'm so excited. Assistant to the Villain is out on September 5th. This one is by an author I've previously read from, and I'm so excited. This is a new one from Catherine Purdy, who wrote Bone Crier's Moon and Bone Crier's Dawn. Loved this book. Still need to read this book, but that's the story of my life. And this book is called The Forest Grim. The tagline is when, when fairy tales come to life with a dark, deadly twist. And there is The Midnight Forest and The Fanged Creature, which are two fortune-telling cards that tell the untimely death of 17-year-old Clara. Despite this warning from her fortune-teller grandmother, Clara must embark into the forest in order to retrieve a book that can reverse the curse on her village and to save her mother. I mean, I love Grimm's fairy tales, so I'm so excited for a new twist on the fairy tales. So I'll be reading this one. The Forest Grimm will be out on September 19th. Next is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed, which bring on the dark academia. Effie has always believed in fairy tales because her whole life she's been plagued by dreams of the fairy king, and she finds solace in a book about girls that fall in love with the fairy king and end up destroying him. This book is the only thing that kind of gives her solace while she is at a prestigious architecture college. However, this author passes away and then there is a contest to redesign his manor. And of course, Effie enters because she loves the book and she's in architectural college. So it's an interesting mishmash of like fairy tales, college, blah blah blah, like throw it all together and it just seems really cool. I love the cover. Uh, Study and Drowning will be out on September 19th. So Miss Jennifer L. Armentrout of From the Nash fame has a new fantasy romance series coming out called The Fall of Wrath and Ruin. So Kalisa has a really good intuition and in this world all but nine cities were destroyed and each city is ruled by someone that is a guardian that feeds on mortal pleasure. So Kalista serves as Baron by giving him information. And when a traveling prince comes, Kalista's intuition says that it's really important to save him. And the voices inside her are blazing with a warning and promise. Today he'll bring her pleasure, but one day he'll bring her doom. I mean, I love JLA. I'm going to read this and I'm very excited for it. And it comes out on September 12th. Okay, I love this cover. It is The Library of Shadows by Rachel Moore. And this book takes place at Radcliffe Prep, which is the third most haunted school in the country. 
Esty enrolls in this school with the hope of finding her dead father, not literally, but she wants to understand more about him and so she wants to go to the same school as him, but then she meets Mateo, who is kind of annoying, but she realizes might actually be a ghost. Mateo then frames Esty for the theft of a rare book from the library, then disappears, and so she must haunt him down or risk being expelled. I mean, that setup just sounds so cool. The Library of Shadows is out on September 5th. Next is The Scarlet Veil by Shelby Marin. I love Shelby Marin. She wrote Serpent and Dove. I have these books here. They're kind of squished in, so I'm not going to pull them out. But this is a spin-off series, which I didn't actually realize until she posted like a snippet about it. But I knew she was working on a vampire book, but I didn't know it was going to be a spin-off to the Serpent and Dove series. And so in this book, we follow Celie, who has played a role in the book from the beginning. And she is the first huntress of the Chasseurs, and she is into her role to protecting Belterra. She has her fiancé Jean-Luc. And there's a new evil rising that Celie must banish or else she could fall prey to the dark, and I'm excited. And this one is out on September 26th. Okay, now we have The Chalice of the Gods by Rick Riordan, which is Percy Jackson and the Olympians at number six. I actually never finish reading through the series and I know that the TV show is also coming so I sense a reread in my future because I do want to get up to reading this and be up to speed with the Percy Jackson world. Also if you live under a rock and you know nothing about the Percy Jackson series it's a middle grade series about Percy Jackson and he finds out that he's a demigod aka the son of a Greek god or goddess and he goes to Camp Half-Blood with all other demigods and adventurers spiral out from there. Okay, we have The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab, which is the follow-up to A Darker Shade of Magic series. I love A Darker Shade of Magic. I am very upset about the cover changes. Look at the US and the UK covers for this. I think I need to buy a UK cover just because I feel like it fits. But apparently this character, instead of seeing things in like the red, white, black, gray color scheme of the first book, sees things in like many colors. So I guess it kind of makes sense, but I still don't like what they did to the original series covers. <laughs> It hurts my soul. But anyways, this is a spin-off to A Darker Shade of Magic, and I'm sure we are going to see some of our familiar characters, but we are following all new characters. I honestly don't know that much about it. I really want to go in blind. It's coming out September 26th. V.E. Schwab is going on tour, and I am going to see her. So if you're going to be at her Boston stop, let me know because I already bought my ticket. Moving along, we have now reached October, and the first book I'm excited for in October is Thorn of the Fallen by Karen Maniscalco. You guys know my undying love for the Kingdom of the Wicked series, and this is like why I really skirts the line of new adult, but now there is a follow-up series that is being published as an adult series, as it should be, and it's gonna follow each of the different princes of hell. This book follows Envy and Camilla, and I'm so excited. I love Carrie Maniscalco. I have read every single one of her books. I'm obsessed with her. I'm so excited she's going fully adult and oh my god. Just like hot demons, you know? Throne of the Fallen comes out on October 3rd. Insert October 3rd meme here. The next big October release is Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare. I honestly have not really looked up most of what this is about. It's adult. It's about Kel who is the sword catcher aka he's like the prince's double and will basically have to like die if there's a threat to the prince and that's kind of the setup and that's all i really want to know i really want to go in kind of blind i'm very interested to see what cassandra claire is going to do in a non shadowhunter set book because she's been writing these bad boys for many many years and it's the first time that she's doing something new sword catcher comes out on october 10th next is the scarlet alchemist by kylie lee baker Zillin wants to become a royal alchemist who will provide for her family by making gold and gems for the royals to eat in order to stay young forever. But for now, she's trapped in her impoverished village and she sometimes raises the dead. And this is illegal, but she's doing it, you know, to keep food on the table. So she finds a chance to go and take her imperial exams to potentially become a royal alchemist. Except her reputation precedes her and now she's being sought out by the crown prince because he thinks that he may potentially be assassinated and needs someone to resurrect him if that happens. The Scarlet Alchemist is out on October 3rd. Next is Unholy Terrors by Lyndall Clipstone. Lyndall Clipstone wrote Lake's Edge, which I actually really liked, and I need to read the sequel, but like, do you see a common theme here? 
anyways it says it is a blood stained tale of a girl torn between her vows and her heart where falling in love may be the deepest sin of all what a tagline so everlene is a warden and she guards against these monsters known as vespertines except one day one of these vespertines known as ravel comes to her and kind of lets her know that the vespertines have their secrets of their own i mean there is a theme here gothic horror fantasy sign me up unholy terrors is out on october 17th okay this cover is so cool it is the night hunt by alexandra christo and it is a dark fantasy romance about a monstrous girl who feeds on fear and the god cursed boy who falls in love with her i mean the cover the setup everything about it i definitely will be picking this one up the night hunt is out on october 10th next is a gothic horror and that is starling house by alex e harrow so there's a legend of e starling an author who wrote the underland and then disappeared and then starling house just like appeared one day and everyone kind of agrees to let the house and its last lonely heir arthur starling to rot but opal <sighs> opal knows that too but an unexpected job author offer might just be what she needs to help get her brother out of their small town i love a good haunted house story i'm excited for this one alexi e. harrow i know is known for very good writing and i'm ready for the story Starling House is out on October 3rd. There is A Curse for True Love, which is the third book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart and the Ballad of Ever After series. Oh my god, I can't wait. I read the, this series at the end of last year. I have a vlog for both Caraval series, which is his predecessor, and this spin-off series. I'm just in love with it. In this book, we follow Jax, who is a fate, and Evangeline, who is a very optimistic girl, and they journey to the Magnificent North, and it has to do with curses, and myths, and legends, and stories, and uh, I'm just obsessed with it. If you want just like a, a magical fairy tale, like this is the series for you. And the way the second book ended, my heart was torn out of my chest. I need to read this third book. Like, I need it so badly. I need to know when it's gonna happen to them. Oh, I love them so much. And it's out on October 24th, and I will be reading it the second it comes out. I've been seeing a lot of early buzz for this next one, and that is The Hurricane Wars by Thea Kwanzaan. And it is about the fates of two bitter enemies with opposing magical abilities that are swept up into what is known as the Hurricane Wars in a storm-ravaged land inspired by Southeast Asia. Taliesin has fought with the soldiers in the Hurricane Wars her whole life, that's all she knows, but she has a secret, and that is that she is light magic which is thought to have been a long extinct form of magic. Then we have Alaric who is heir to the Shadow Court and is opposing the side that Taliesin is on and he has shadow magic. And so it's the opposition of light and dark which I always find to be a very interesting interplay and I honestly think that this book is going to take off based on like early reviews that I've seen from people and this book is out on October 3rd. Next is What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. We have Bolivian Argentinian Inez Oliveira, who belongs to the Glittering Upper Society of 19th Century Buenos Aires. Inez's parents are globetrotters and they often leave her behind, and she finds out that they have died and she inherits their fortune. And with this, a mysterious guardian, who is an archaeologist in partnership with his Egyptian brother in law. Inez wants answers, and so she sets up for Cairo. And there she discovered there's more to her parents' disappearance than what meets the eye. This one sounds so cool, an interesting mix of heritages, of heritage, of heritages, am I saying the word right? Of heritages, of heritages, of heritages, heritages, oh my god, I can't speak, of cultures. And I've always been drawn to things that are Egyptian inspired, so... I am intrigued by this one. What the River Knows is out on October 31st. The first one being A Fire in the Flesh by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which is the third and final book in her spin-off trilogy to the From Blood Nash world, where we follow Sarah and Nyctos. And Sarah basically has been prophesized, and her purpose is to marry the primal of death ever since she was a child, but she thinks in order to save her people, she has to kill the primal of death, and so that she's been raised to make the primal fall in love with her and then kill him because he can only be killed by the person that he loves and this is their story it definitely ties into from blood and ash and i'm really intrigued to see how this trilogy is going to wrap up and how it's going to be connected to the final book in the from blood and ash series i also love the cover for this one and this book is actually coming out on october 31st 
this one is a book by the author of the queen of the tearling which i read forever ago only read the first one never continued on with the series let me know if i showed down below if it was good i haven't really heard anything about it but this is the kingdom of sweets by erica johansson and this is a standalone nutcracker retelling i have not really read any nutcracker retellings and i think this one's gonna be really intriguing as well as like a dark twisty christmas fantasy the kingdom of sweets is out on november 28th next is defy which is the fourth book in the skyward series so we have skyward star sight and Cytonic and this is Brandon Sanderson's YA sci-fi series. I think it's absolutely incredible. I've only read the first two books but I obviously am continuing on. I thought it was only a trilogy so when I found out that there was a fourth book I was like oh my god. So in Skyward we follow Spensa. She lives on this planet where the humans are trying to make their homes in these this cave system from like a few generations back they had like a spaceship that crash landed there and they have these space pilots that are constantly trying to defend the system because they have all of these alien invaders since she was a little girl spence has always wanted to be one of these pilots but her fate is intertwined with her father's and her father is one of the like biggest known traitors because he ended up deserting his team but spence is willing to risk anything to prove herself for a chance to be in flight school and she has the will and the grit that it takes and this book just goes in insane directions i've never read another sci-fi book like it it's incredible it involves some physics it involves a doom slug that's like my favorite character and i definitely want to get back into this world because it's incredible defiant comes out on november 21st Okay, one of my favorite authors is continuing one of her series, and I'm so excited. And that is Trisha Levenseller continuing the Daughter of the Pirate King series. So we have the Daughter of the Pirate King, Daughter of the Siren Queen, and now Vengeance of the Pirate Queen. I also need to pick up the new covers of these original books, which I'm planning on doing. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But those sprite edges are gorgeous. So Sorinda was a side character in the first two books and she's an assassin that is working for this pirate queen and her new mission is not to go out and kill someone but to lead a crew on a rescue mission and of course her helmsman is attractively annoying and they accidentally awaken the king of the undersea who can control the dead so it's a standalone fantasy romance set in this world sorinda was such a good side character in the first two books and i'm just so excited to be returning to this world i think it's so fun and i love trisha levenseller i have read all of her books and i love her vengeance of the pirate queen is out on november 7th and lastly for november we have iron flame which is the sequel to fourth wing by rebecca yaros if you don't know this book you've been living under a rock this follows Violet Sorengale. Her mother is the general of the Riders, and she thought her whole life she was going to go into this war college to be a scribe, but six months before her mom is like, no, you're actually going into the Riders Quadrant and you are going to be a Dragon Rider, which is kind of a problem for Violet because she is very weak and frail. She has what's known as Ehlers Dawn Syndrome, and she just, her body can just be very like fragile and she like breaks bones more easily and so this war college is brutal people like die during every kind of thing and you have to compete in order to bond to a dragon and so no one thinks that she's going to make it and when she's there she encounters Zayden Ryorson who her mother killed his father so it's like kind of awkward and he kind of has it out for her and the story is just so action-packed and fun and incredible and there's reason it's going viral and yeah I need the next one immediately I'm so excited Iron Flame comes out November 7th. Alright, so now moving on to December. Honestly, December is a little bit slow in terms of book releases, so I have two books that I am excited for that are coming out that month. First, we have This Cursed Light, which is a sequel to This Vicious Grace by Emily Thierry. I read this book last year, loved it. Look, I matched my tabs. This is a world where you have a Fenestra, and she has the ability to amplify the magic user's magic but the problem is that every one of the magic users that she's been bonded to they end up dying because she just like amplifies their power too much and this is a problem because the Fenestra is chosen to amplify the magic user's power because every generation there is a plague of demons and they are that pair is the only one that can stop the plague so she 
thinks that there's a religious cult trying to kill her because she keeps accidentally killing her partners and so she hires a bodyguard to protect her and that bodyguard is Dante but Dante is hiding his own dark secrets this one was so fun it was set on like a Sicilian inspired island and the concept of a demon plague pretty cool pretty badass and I love this and I'm so excited for the sequel and I love the cover art this Cursed Light is out December 5th. And last but not least, we have Ruthless Vows, which is the sequel to Divine Rivals. This here is the UK cover. I bought it because this cover art is so stunning. I do still need to pick up the US version, but I think because the second one's out so soon, I'm gonna read these two together. This book is kind of going viral and I'm so excited because Rebecca Ross deserves the world. I have some of her books here. She's like one of my all time faves. I love her, so I'm so happy for her. So in Divine Rivals, we follow Iris and Roman, and they both work at a newspaper, and they are kind of like enemies of the newspaper competing, but they kind of get sent to the war front with like these magical typewriters, and it's their love story, and I don't want to know too many more details than that because I just feel like this is going to be such a beautiful and unique story, and I just can't wait to watch it unfold, and the sequel, Ruthless Vows, is out December 26th. And that is it. Those are all of the books that I have to talk about today. There are so many exciting titles coming out in the second half of the year. Please let me know down below what book you are most looking forward to and leave a little book sack emoji if you have watched this far. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because it really helps out my channel and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.